Jeremy here on my own today. Unfortunately, Jeremy last night, kind of not sure what happened, but he uh, messaged in saying he could not make it. He's not feeling too well. Our other presenter, Henry, he um he's been to stay, I believe, or possibly overseas playing tennis. So good luck to him in whatever he is doing. Uh, um, as I said, on my own, I'm here with our producer, Darren. So. He's uh, paddling for me today, and it's always good to have someone to help me out and a bit of company. But right now, I am going to head to the newsroom for, to tell you what has happened recently. And to start off with, the Adelaide Crows and Brendan Sanderson have mutually parted ways. Due to both coach and club, were heading in separate directions. A thought candidate for the position, ex Crow Simon Goodwin, unfortunately, has signed a five year deal with Melbourne which will see him take over as senior coach. The LA36ers tackle the New Zealand Rankers tonight in the pre-season match in Melbourne. Uh, 14-year-old Jake Koste <coughs> Kostecki is set to be set to be the youngest rider ever to race the V8 Supercar Series this weekend at Phillip Island. And Gold Coast coach Guy McKenna looks likely to be sacked after the board has called for a comprehensive review. Since 1889, Port Norwood Grand Finals have thrilled us. The courage, the skill, and the premierships. Now, the dream grand final in the new era of local footy. Norwood, Port Magpies, the SAFL IGA League Grand Final, live Sunday on 7. And welcome back, everyone. Uh, that was Port We'll be starting with what you just heard on the advert there, and it's the SANFL Grand Final this weekend, where Port will be playing the Norwood Red Legs at 2.40pm at Adelaide Oval. A classic match this one. This, uh, these two teams have met four times this season. Port and Crows is... Port and Crows, sorry. My bad. Port and Norwood are two and two this season, and going on the past five games, it's a 3-2 record to Norwood, so... They look uh, quite confident heading into this match. So the last time these two met was the uh, last time these two met in the grand final was in 1999, Port's last grand final, and they won that one 101 to 93. So if you're going off of maybe grand final experiences, you could possibly say that Port have the better run. But their last match, the last time these two met, was a classic match. It was well, Port. Well, let's just say Port were up by 17 points at three quarter time and. Looked, looked very likely, very strong to go across. Never thought they'd have a win to this team. They are the team with, with the uh, AFL list, so they've got a lot of strength behind them. But unfortunately, they were run over the top by Norwood, who really, really kicked on strong. Now, I'm not sure about you guys out here. I'm a, I'm a Norwood supporter, so I'm very, very excited for this. And I, I, I want them to win. And after having a poor start to the season, it's great to see that they've actually made it to the grand final again and go, can go for a three feet, especially after Bassett did leave over over the part over the uh, season. But um just going into the inclusions, I'm just looking out right now. The sorry about this. The inclusions here, ins and outs, Port Adelaide welcome back their uh, forward John Butcher. Uh, he had a few a back problem this week but after the size of the goal kicker missed the cops over the two finals. So good to see him back. They also got Angus Bridgman, Robbie Young, and Henry Sputtery will also be considered for selection. So a few uh, AFL list players on there, so that'll be good for you guys. Confidence into that. Lord, uh, apparently, uh, James Allen has been uh, sorry nominated for proceedings after he was after he had 27 touches in reserves last week. So he's looking confident and great to see him come back as well, especially after he's a triple with Gary Medley. So actually. Be great to see him there. Uh, what else have we got to say about this match? I, what do you think, Darren? What do you think about the match? Well, I think it's going to be a pretty close one because we always we know that in the home and away series that Nord and Port are arch rivals. So, and that goes way back. So, I think having that in the mix too, I think it's going to be a very close game. Not sure who I tip. I know who I'd like to win. Um, I uh, don't know if I should say, oh, I'll say, oh, I'd like to see Norway, but mm, first time there's Port Adelaide April Reserves, and there's some players in there, it's going to be close, I don't know if I'd put money on it, but things close that Norway can get over the line, but we'll just have to see. 
Thanks for that, Darren. Now, I was at the match last week, uh, at South v Adelaide, and it was a very strong match. The first quarter, the two only kicked three goals between them, and it was a really tough, hard tackling game, but in the second half, it was really, it was all poor after that. They, they kicked the first five goals of the, of the half and just completely blitzed South. South had a, they had a bit of a comeback in the fourth quarter, but after what Port put on in the, in the third quarter, it was just, it was far too much. Uh, for them to be able to come back from that, especially after with the AFL list and the strength that they started holding, it was just it was too much for South, who possibly had made them a little bit too early on six games straight before that match. So it's all six game winning streak. So, but um, we're very confident heading into this match. Uh, I don't know. I I can see Panos kicking quite a few goals if he's able to. If he's able to get his kicking boots on, he can be a bit hit and miss. He kicked nine this season. He's kicked an eight as well, I believe. But then this big game where he's kicked one goal seven. So he he could be the difference. He could be a guy that, yeah, if he's in form, he'd definitely be it. Um, they also got, I can't remember his name now, I'm sorry, I don't think they're playing. But a, uh, a young, talented man, quite quick, slippy on the wing. Number 21, I've forgotten his name. But um, he's a very talented man and... I saw him up at Alberton playing when, when you would disgracefully kick six goals 15 and Port were a faster on the side that day and were able to kick nine goals seven, I believe. Uh, so they were able to get over the top there, but he was definitely, he was running a, running a march that game and was able to push it along the boundary line, skip through a part of a few players, pick the ball back up and launch it into the 15. Yeah, he's, he's going to be one to look out for, but then again, with the effort this that Port hold, it's going to be a tough match. It's going to be a struggle, but I'm looking forward to it. If you guys want to, if you guys want to catch any of the uh, any of the pre-game stuff, get in the um. There is a band coming in this weekend. Uh, I can't remember what their name is uh, for the pre-match. It's the Screaming Jets. The Screaming Jets, a, a classic '80s band, I believe. So yeah, '80s, yeah. '90s. They've got the occasional. Um, gig around the place, and their lead singer is often can be heard on uh, Triple M. What's his name? I should get back to you on that. I oh, don't worry, so that's all good. But um, also, if you guys are even more eager, you're big SNFL fans or big Port fans or whatever, you just, you know, you're, re- you're really supporting Port this season because they have a big final season, both in the AFL and SNFL, you can get down to LA Open tomorrow morning at 10 a.m where you can catch both teams and their players for uh, a pre for catch up and signatures and they'll have their say and I think you also have a chance to hold the cup. You can in, and have your photos taken. And the answer to your question, the singer of Scripting Jets is Dave Gleason. Well that's good to know. So yes, you can catch them at the pre match and if you if you're not gonna make your way down over to the game, we are able to make it, it is on channel seven coverage start from 2pm, so looking forward to that, but right, oh yeah. Oh sorry, I was just going to say, it's good because the SNFL won't have to, uh, the SNFL won't have to compete with any AFL coverage on Sunday. Yeah, no, that's great, I, I just looked it up, then I just assumed they're on 7 mate because I know they've got to deal with 7 mate. but the fact that they put them on national television on their main one, 2pm, well, what else, not, not much else you can do on a Sunday really, apart from watch sport, I believe, so, you know, Prime time, perfect. Oh, it is, absolutely. Definitely. So, yeah, um, we're going to go to a song now, but when we come back, we will enter into the other port in the Port Power and talk about the final series ahead. Sorry about that, I didn't mean to sprint. No, yeah, that's alright. I just felt like my voice was being boring, so I had to check you. No, yeah, that's good. Go, go for it. Right. Just think, if Port do do it on Sunday, and Port Adelaide do beat Hawthorne yeah. tomorrow, and somehow <laughs> win the grand final, think what Adelaide's going to be like. I'm not looking forward to that. No. I'm not really going to that. No. I don't think that would be a fun Sydney, I think.
Um, got two twenty. Um, I reckon I might start with the Sydney game first, do it. Yep. Go through that, hand to set 50. Mm-hmm. Emergencies. No outs for Sydney. Mmm. Nothing. Wow. No changes. Wow. And Sydney beats... Warthog? Yeah, I think they must have, yeah. No, wait, what did you want to Signature. No, no, they beat Fremantle. Yes. And Hawthorne beat the job. Mm. Yeah, yes, in Fremantle. Yeah. Okay. You didn't pull... Didn't Paul Power play Freo? Yeah, they knocked him out last week. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Yeah, they knocked him out. Mm. Oh, I don't watch that much. Sorry? I can't, I don't even watch that much. Before 3-9-2. No, I was busy. Mm. Right? I think there's a lot of people that have seen it. Yeah. I'm watching it. I'd like to do the show you can hear all the time. You'd like to? Yeah. It's good, it's just a bit of noise. Like, nah. Yeah. It's sound perfect. Yeah, exactly. It's just more room to spread out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, it's really tight. I don't know if it's, if the table's high enough or low enough for Henry. This one? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I'll, I'll ask him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, North Melbourne, um, hello and welcome back, Ben here for Ozports FM on my own, no other presenters with me, I'm here with my producer though, so not alone completely. Uh, we are starting off with the AFL starting off. Our second story is the AFL finals, the preliminary finals that is, that is this weekend. The first match is tonight, so look forward to that. It is Sydney versus Mel- Melbourne, North Melbourne, sorry, at ANZ Stadium. Uh, for the Sydney Swans, they have no wins or outs. They're completely the exact same side as the one that came up against Fremantle two weeks ago at also ANZ Stadium where they... <clears throat> got the goods, got the chocolates, and have made it through, obviously, to this round. They do face North Melbourne, who, fortunately, Bruma Hartley got away with the one, got away and did not get that one-week suspension after a player came out and Selwyn, I believe, was the player he said, no, it wasn't that bad a hit, didn't really feel it, I reckon she was suspended, and the AFL believed that he was right. Uh, so they only have one out, and that is McMillan, the, uh, with a hand-tree injury, I believe. And in is Jacobs. So this match looking to be a good one. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing this. North Melbourne, if they have the confidence they've had the last two weeks, they are definitely going to be a side to mess with. No, one not to mess with because they get off to a good start like they did against Geelong. Maybe they could pin pin Sydney to the wall and able to run over the top, but I can't really see that myself. With Sydney, it's such a strong side, very good side. They're top of the table. They just... I don't know, how many games, oh no, they lost to Richmond, but how many games did they go, oh, they won quite a few in the road, didn't they? they? They lost their first couple and then won a big winning streak to get to the top. They did, I'm also not sure of the number, but you're right, they were on a, quite a good roll for uh, quite a while. And at the start, I, I really noisy me listening at the start of the season to commentators and sport journalists who go, always, always like to give their two cents about Sydney, they always lose their first few, that under Paul Rears and under Long Nights always happen, they lose their first couple a bit shaky, knocking off the cobwebs from the season before because, you know, they've played the grand final um, or they've made it pretty far in the final series and everyone goes, oh, this is, and this is not Sydney. They're not going to make the finals this year. And then, look, top of the table, Buddy Franklin and Tippett have gelled really well together. Uh, I just, yeah, I see them as an unstoppable force. How about you? I'd have to agree. I'd like to see uh, Sydney do it. it. I actually quite like this uh, this year's uh, four teams. It's... 
two from Victoria, two from the interstate. So it's not just all Victorian, it's um, got Sydney and um, one from Adelaide. Yeah, so that, yeah, that's really good to see. It's always good that um, interstate teams are in there, kind of. They made the uh, MCG rule, didn't they, because of interstate teams when it was a year where there was only one Melbourne side in it, and I believe they finished seventh or eighth, so there was no chance of any finals really being played inside Melbourne, so they had to change it for that. Yeah, that's right, yes. But um, moving on to the next game, uh, all you power fans will be excited about this. Uh, Hawthorne are taking on Port Adelaide at Saturday, on Saturday, a twilight match at the MCG. I'm um, not so sure that was the best decision for a Saturday. No, no. I would have gone Saturday night, 7.10, but <clears throat> they've decided to go 4.45 at the G. Um, a lot of power fans travelling to that one, I've heard. Yes, a uh, number of buses that the actual uh, Port Adelaide put on are all full and extra flights have been put on, and I know there's been a huge amount of actually just driving over. Yeah, I've heard of that too. Apparently for... The cost to fly over, stay for two nights, or no, stay overnight, and then fly back the next day is the same cost as a trip to Bali for four nights. Wow, so far out. They're really, they're really pushing their budget, especially considering, considering they had to fly to Fremantle the week before. Imagine if you're a fan, you, you, threw, you went all the way to Frio, or Earth, $1,500, yep. and then that's like... Three grand return, and then you're doing it again for the Melbourne match. Oh, definitely. And just talking about last week, it wasn't straight. It wasn't from Australia straight uh, from a state to Perth. It was uh, Australia by Singapore to Perth. Yeah, I know. That was a special deal. I, I still can't believe that having to fly out of your own country just to go to Perth. It, just, it doesn't make sense. Anyway, the um, I just thought... I'd also mention the ins and outs for both teams. Oh, only one for the Hawks this week. It is suckling and out is Sewell. So, well, there's no, there's nothing next to Sewell's name, so it looks like he's been dropped this week. There's no, it must be an omission, not a, um, not an injury or anything like that. Do you know of anything? I've actually heard that Rioli is out um, and Sewell well. is coming in, but We'll check that during our next song and we'll get back to you on that. That's yeah. just what I heard this morning. So. Okay, but this, I'm reading this off this morning's Australian uh, newspaper. So, I mean, they could, they did print it at midday, so it could be a bit off. And for the power, they have no changes. So, all fans out there can breathe a sigh of relief as there are no injuries or anything going down at the team. No sickness, no, no flus. So, that's been washed out of the club after the past few months, which is great to see. Uh, I reckon I reckon Port could could do this could do the Hawks this week. I don't see it as a very likely thing, but I could see them definitely definitely going the way if they play their kind of cards right and uh up to the hundred percent potential because fourth one second half against Geelong wasn't really the best half to watch. Apparently, I missed that first half. Apparently, that was a crap. I don't know if you were going to catch that, Andrew. Uh, Darren, sorry. That's all right. Um, no, I missed that sadly, but um, yes. Yeah. And according to the Herald Sun, fourteen. This was um, on, put online fourteen hours ago. Let's see if I can just bring it up. Okay, we'll wait for that to come up. Yes, no, actually, I'm seeing, yes, I'm seeing here Hawks, so they just refused, no, this came up on, this is on the, the Australian right next to it, Hawks, like, just refused to gamble with Rioli. That's what the, that's what the headline says. So, ah, right. So, okay. possibly, this was, this would have been written up yesterday, but, yeah, that looks like he will not be playing, which is, could, could be good if they win, and then they keep to the grand final. Well, that's what I think I heard this morning, and they were going to give him a, Depending on what the result was, I think they were going to give him a run in the VFL this week and then see how he pulls up for the grand final if they do make it. I heard that um, during finals, all players, like all AFL players, aren't allowed to play in the VFL sites. So is that, am I wrong there? Well, yeah. I thought so because that was, it actually came up uh, in the last week or a couple of weeks ago about two other players that wanted to play for, I think it was Box Hill. So, yeah. uh, I'm not sure what's going on uh, going on there. 
Well, hopefully he gets a run somewhere because he's definitely a talent. And if you can give him a run this week, and they do make the grand final next week, it will be definitely, definitely be great for, great for him and for the team. Yep. Uh, just reading them from the Herald Sun, Cyril Rioli is willing to take a step back in a bit for a giant leap forward on Sunday at Hawthorne qualifies another grand final, and he will test his repaired hamstring in a debut with affiliate Box Hill Hawks in the VFL. Okay, so it looks like what I thought there is wrong. They must be able to play, but that's all good. I, yep. it, what are your predictions for both teams? Who do you think will make it the grand final? I'd like to, I'm, I'll stay now, I'm a Crows fan, uh, but I think it would be good for South Australia if Port Power does make the grand final, yes, but Hawks have, uh, have been a very strong team this season, so I'm kind of leaning towards Hawks, but anything could happen. And how about Sydney North Melbourne, who are you doing that one? Oh, I got friends who are North Melbourne, so better be careful. Um, yeah, Jeremy is a North Melbourne fan too, so I'm sure yes. he won't be quite happy that I actually could be in the city spots. That's right, and so is our good old reporter, Chris Guscott. But I would have to, I'd like Sydney is yeah. my tip. Well, definitely. I, I can't see Sydney actually losing the grand final like either, I guess, like any of these teams or any team anyway. So, um, but yeah, Sydney and Hawks for me. And we'll be going to a break, I believe. We will. Here's where we are. After the highs and lows, ins and outs, convincing wins and bruising defeats. Now's when your turn needs you most. So as you go into the finals, don't go quietly. This one we've got a, a minute. Uh, minute Brilliant sunshine linking voices for a victorious version of your club's September song. Or go face a poor guy breeze. Warming your hands with thunderous applause. Because they can be here for about 22 minutes. But don't go quietly. Don't let your voice carry across a roaring sea of faithful and first timers. Or go push the boundaries. Because no matter who you're drawn to play against, your team will draw inspiration, passion, energy just from you being there. So don't go quietly. Go so there's no mistaking your allegiance. Ready to reward every winning goal, kick, tackle or mark. Or go and leave nothing in reserve. Not when you're this close to end of season glory. No, you don't go quietly. Go kicking and screaming, begging for a miracle that won't banish you to the Premiership out of for another season. Or go in triumph to look into your teammates eyes, into each supportive face as the magnitude of all you've achieved begins to sink in. Just don't go quietly. Racism has no place in sport. No place in sport. Everyone. Everyone deserves a fair go. Regardless of skin colour, background or culture. Racism! Racism. It is not for me. It stops with me. It stops with me. With me. With me. With me. Racism. It stops with me. And welcome back to Oz FM fans here. We're going, I'm going to talk about, sorry, I am home as I have mentioned over and over again, so I'm sure you're getting sick of that. Um, I'm doing, we're talking about the, about Sanderson getting sacked by the Adelaide Crows. Front and back page of yesterday's paper, the front page reading, Sando sat with a little note on the side saying, key players turn on coach, inside the accent, Rucci's expert analyst, analyst analysis on the roof of food, and who will be at least next day again. Yeah. Uh, on the back of that newspaper as well is Sando Shock, a good move, question mark, former Crows captain, early favourite to be next coach, and a picture of Simon Goodwood. Yeah, on the back in his Essendon top, of course, but he has moved on, and as we know, he will be coaching at Bell for the next five years. Here, uh, on the back of this paper as well, I'm sure Port will be very, very, very annoyed about this. No coverage at all in the Apple. Not no coverage, but not as much coverage as what the Crows are getting right now, because on the back, it's a picture of Sanderson with all of the press surrounding him saying, Coach Shock, 
Line in, line in the sand that pros focus on highly tested coach to fill void. I am also shocked, just like the advertiser, and quite annoyed at, I don't know, Mark Rusciuto or at the Crows board for making this decision because I don't believe he should have been sacked. What do you reckon? Oh, I don't agree. I don't um, I agree with you. Yeah, he should not have been sacked. I, out of all the coaches the Crows have had, I've liked Sando the most. Yeah. And it seems like they're, they're, moving, they're really moving really fast at the Crows. So, of course, they pointed their new CEO, uh, Andrew Fagan, Monday. And two days later, they've sacked their coach. Well, rumours go around that there was rumours going around that he was the reason for the action, but that Crows have come out, and I don't know if he's come out yet, but said he's not even anywhere near the club yet. He hasn't been able to have any say on anything that's going around. But Mark Rashiro was on Triple M yesterday, yesterday, and was questioned about it, and he he didn't say that he was the reason for it, but he said he had quite a big say about it, and he was only newly appointed to the uh, board brief. I don't know, last week, was it? I think it must have been. It's only been the last yeah, week or so, yeah. definitely. You sound like I'm not doing anything. Yeah, I'm keep going, was it? <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, no, he, was, he said he's got a big big part in playing it. Uh, Nova have come out. Everyone's really come out and had their two cents, but Nova have come out, and they've all... They said out of all the players that interviewed, the only player that's really been confident is Rory Sloan. He's the only one that's back Sanderson, so that's never a good sign. And then there's things, a 5 A said that a bunch of players um, have gone to the board after the after the player of the year and said, we, we want him out and we don't agree with him. So yeah, I, I'm not sure. And also, Another another rumor going around is that Sanderson was willing to let Dangerfield walk. So I would not personally, I would not want him to walk. What, would you want want him to walk? No, no. I think we've got to hold on to Dangerfield, uh, Sloan, and a couple of others to have a, have a chance for next year. Yeah, I reckon Walker and Talia, like they're the, they're the key ones. But Rashida came out and said that uh, Walker, Sloan, and Dangerfield. Not that they're definitely not leaving, but he said he's very, he's basically very confident that these guys are staying that late for the for quite a long time. So that's always a good sign. But yeah, I he, he didn't have the best record over the past few years, did he, Sander? He still had about a fifty six percent win rate, but his last two seasons have been pretty not poor, but up and down. They have been rather definitely. What do you what do you reckon? Do you reckon? I know you said you don't agree with it, but do you reckon it was a fair call, or do you believe that maybe it was a little bit out of order? Maybe they should have given him another year. Maybe another year. I think it was out of out of order, and he didn't see this. He didn't even see this uh, coming. He was just as shocked as uh, everyone else when he was uh, told by the the chairman, uh, Rob Chap- Chapman. Yeah, of course. And now, now that now it's who are they going to who are they going to find this coach? And everyone, Melbourne apparently were very nervous over the past forty eight hours, or the night leading up to signing, because they believe that he was going to have late. But he's been signed up there. He's no chance there. Who else was it? There was someone else that's been denied as well. They seem to be targeting um, Essendon coaches. Uh, Bob Thompson was also in the picture. Yeah, that's right. He, after the accident of Stanson, he said, I'm not, I don't want to go to that club at this time. And he's also really good friends with Sando and didn't want to step, yeah, of step on his territory after he just got sacked. I would have liked to have seen Bob Thompson to the pros with Sando, but unfortunately that will not be happening now. No. Uh, Export player Stewie Jew is uh, up for up for contention apparently. I think this is a bit of an odd one because he played quite a few games for uh, the Port Adelaide Power. So I don't, I, I'm at a pro fan would be a bit shocked to see him moving there, but that was a good coach. Right, well, yeah, I'd like us to have a coach who's got at least senior experience. Yeah. Um, I didn't even know Scott, Scotty G was coaching until you uh, told me off air. And he's, he's had, he's, he's uh, been underneath, uh, I believe it was Brett Ratton at Carlton. He was at Collingwood, he started at Collingwood under Bulkhouse, and he was also at Hawthorne. So 
He's had a bit of a good run. He's been going for a few years. I didn't know about either until this week when I heard it on Anthony 360. So, uh, but uh, Paul Bruce has come out and said that he's been trying to sign him for quite a few years and he reckons he's the next coach. So, to, the one to lead the way in the NFL. But Nathan Bassett, another jump, another option? What do you reckon of him? Well, we've been having, we, I put it out on, on your sports Facebook who would they like to see as coach and quite a few people have actually said they'd like to see Nathan Bassett come back to Adelaide. Oh, I would love to see it. And he's got, yes, it's not AFL, but he's got a good track record for coaching teams. With Norwood, he's just, the last few years, he took the 2010, I believe he started there, got into the grand final, then preliminary final 2011, and then 2012, 2013 grand finals. And so, you have a coach like him, he's just got such a good, such a good reputation. I, mean, I, wouldn't, want to, so I wouldn't say no to him if I could get him at the club. Absolutely. He's currently at, is he number Essendon? Yeah, he's at Essendon. He signed there last year um, as an assistant coach. So maybe Goodwin's left, maybe he'll be going on. There's not as many friendly faces around as what he expected. Hopefully come back to Adelaide, that would be great to see. It would be. He would. I'd like to see him. He'd be my first choice. He'd be your first? Yeah, I, I thought that too, but after hearing about Stuart Dew and the, all the commotion going on about him, I... Oh, no, nah, I still have to go Nathan Bassett too, but I feel bad for Sanderson after having a battle with this side. I mean, what's he going to do? Is he going to find a role in another club? Is he going to find a role in Adelaide? Or does, does he know you? Has he said anything? Well, do you think he would rule out going up to the Gold Coast? And I don't want to preempt our next story, but um, do you think he might move up to the Gold Coast? Oh, he could, but yeah, well, we might as well talk about it now at the same time. Um, Guy McKenna is, well, he's not axed yet, but he's, he could be on his way out at the Gold Coast too. I, it'd be funny if they switch roles, but I, I don't, personally, I don't want to see Guy McKenna at the pros, but um, Sanderson up at the Gold Coast would, Definitely be an interesting move for him. But yeah, no, I feel bad for him. I'd like to see a role with him there. I would have loved to see Bob Thomas there actually as well, but he's he bought himself out, so that's never never a good thing. No, that's right. Yeah, uh, he would have been my 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 choice. Yeah. Yeah. yeah of course. Yes, sir. Well it's I'm looking at it on the newspaper now as well, page seventy six if you open up on the advertiser, it talks about how he went. Over the season, we went three losses, three wins. Then it literally was loss, win, loss, win, loss, win, loss, win, win, loss, win, loss, win, loss, win and then loss, loss. So basically, we had a win loss average the whole season. So, yeah. Oh, Patrick Dangerfield was on the footy show as well last night, and he came out saying that um, the boys were not happy with their results, but he didn't put any blame on Sanderson, which is a good sign that he was getting drilled by the, by the presenters. This is one thing I can't understand. I know a couple of clubs so far have um, delisted players, but why is it always the coach? Coach can only do so much on a game day, and then it comes back to the players interpreting what the coach says and being able to carry that out. And it seems to always be the coach, it always falls on his sword. Well, so who was um, I mean, I'm memory lapse here. It's, it's not early, but it's early for me. Um, <laughs> Who was the coach we had? He recently passed away. Uh, Dean Lately. Yes. Now, look, I heard a lot about him over the past 12 months. How he was a real big inspiration for the boys. And he was, not only that, he was a tactician. He was the one that, Sanderson would do all the talking and everything, but he would be the one that would go, no, you should change this player. He was the one who was the responder during the match, the one who would make the tactic changes. So... Possibly he's just missing a right hand man, but that's all they needed. I mean, that first year we did make it to the preliminary final, finished second, and then after that he tenth last season and eleventh this season. So maybe he just needs a right hand man. That's right, and this would come back to Bomber Thompson. Whether I think Bomber Thompson could fit that role perfectly. Oh, Sadly, left by Dean. Definitely, I've got to find that. The, 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 probably the funniest image I have of Bob Thompson, or the image that comes to my mind when he coaches, is him playing, like him coaching Geelong a few years ago, and he was eating a sandwich in the box. And I don't think he was concentrating on the game at all, but that is how good a coach he is. He doesn't even have to concentrate, his players don't even work for it. But when we come back, I believe we'll be going to a song, or a, yeah, a song, and we'll be going to a song, and when we come back, we'll be talking about the gridiron, so stay tuned for that too. Thank you. 
What's the lake code? Sorry? What's the lake code? Is there a sponsor? Or? Um, not really. It doesn't really count in sponsor. Just Gridiron, South Australia. Gridiron, South Australia? Yeah. South Australia. I say South Australia. Okay. Easy. Wrap up with that. Ask for your opinion. Did you see the matches? Mm. Do, you know, do you know how I thought? Do you remember a bit? That games? A little bit, yeah. Would you mind if I just go, oh, what did you think of the matches on the weekend? Yeah, go for it. Go yeah. easy. Extend it out a bit. Oh wow, you didn't notice that. Picture of the chap. Oh, oh. Him, like, oh, the badge in the nose. Mm. <laughs> Second is the Razorbacks, second is the Eagles, 
third place is the Chiefs. The Spartans are sitting at four and are sitting on the bottom of the ladder is the Oilers. And this, if you want to go out and head to the matches, the uh, game is this Saturday, I believe, Saturday. That's right, uh, commencing at 12 for the first game, then 3 o'clock for the second game, and it's at the Club at Marion, what's Alm uh, Sturt Road at Marion. Well, get out there if you can, go and see the first match between the Oilers and the Chiefs, and the second match is the Razorbacks and the Spartans with Eagles with the bye this weekend. That's right, and we won't be able to talk, well, we can talk about the results uh, from next week's Oh, no, no, sorry. I'm just looking at, just looking at the schedule. And they've actually got a Friday game next next week. Oh, really? And one of the matches. And probably, I'm not sure if it's going to be the first or second match, but it's going to be a, it's going to be a replay of the grand final between the Eastside Razorbacks and Uni SA Adelaide Eagles. Well, that'll be exciting to watch for yes, sure. Yes, it's the match of the round. What are you, what are you thinking of... Uh What's your prediction for this weekend's matches? So going back to the Oilers versus Chiefs and the Razorbacks and Spartans, who do you think will win both matches? I would probably have to say the Chiefs. Yep. Uh, yep. And I think the Razorbacks. The Razorbacks seem to be on a, a roll at the moment. They're still on top of the, the table. So I think I would have to say the Razorbacks and the Chiefs. Awesome. And this is only round three though, so we've got a long way ahead of us and a big road ahead. So we do. Yeah, we play up to we play up to December, so yep, yeah, still a very long way to go. So yes, it's definitely it's, it's anyone's season at the moment and it's round three. That's right, and you can keep up to date with everything the South Australian Gridiron uh, on the All Sports Online Network and that's at www.allsportsonline.com and just click on the Gridiron uh, tab at the top of the page. And this week's episode of the Huddle Hour Gridiron Show should be up on the site very soon. Well, we're looking forward to that for sure, definitely. And uh, that's it for this week's show. Hopefully I will have a host to be with me next week, not just and, uh, Darren, who it's been great to have him there, but we, we like to keep him on the panel so that he can keep the show running for sure. That's right. Smoothly, so. Have a good day, guys, and look forward to next week.